I'm Howie John. I'm Justin Mellon. And I'm Austin Wilcox. We are Team 20, and today we'll be discussing our BRG project, Fun with Horses. So far, the team has completed the project planning stage. During this stage, we identified three initial proposals. We evaluated and analyzed these proposals to choose one final proposal that we focus on for the entire project. After planning, we started project management. During this stage, we identified all important tasks required to successfully complete the project. We identified deadlines by which the, the tasks had to be completed and how long each task would take. After doing that, we organized the information into a Gantt chart, which helps us throughout the project gauge how productive we're being, how efficient, and what's left to complete. After that, we identified customers. We interviewed these customers to see what their potential needs could be. Using these needs, we identified specifications which describe how the product will fulfill the needs of the customer. Using the customer needs and specifications, we created a QFD chart. This QFD chart will show the relation between the customer needs and the specifications. After that, we used competitive benchmarking to see how we fare with our competitors in the marketplace. Lastly, we used economic analysis to observe the potential expenses, price point, and profit for our product. During the project planning phase, we came up with three proposal ideas. The first one focused on the topic of computer science. We thought that this idea could be useful to physically demonstrate concepts that would be taught in a computer environment. We also came up with the idea of projectile motion and potential and kinetic energy, which is what we eventually settled on. We created a mission statement, which describes our product and what we hope to accomplish with our product. Our product would be, would demonstrate fundamental physical concepts such as velocity, gravity, kinetic energy, potential energy. Through this, we hope to offer students a new way to visualize theoretical concepts taught in the classroom and give a more hands-on approach and a fun environment for students. Key business goals, we hope it's easy to use, low cost, and durable because it will be used repeatedly in the classroom and hopefully for years to come. Our primary markets would be high school physics teachers, school administrators, and secondary markets could be camps, or any other educational establishment. Stakeholders would include all entities of VTEPS Inc., school administrators, teachers, students, basically anybody involved in using the product. So we created a customer profile, and this customer profile is what we expect our typical buyer to look like, or at least one of the primary customers. And what we came up with is a man named Edwin Winslow. He's a middle-aged male. He teaches high school physics. And he would use this product because he thinks it's important for students to get hands-on experience in the lessons that he teaches, as opposed to just understanding concepts. He also himself enjoys doing DIY projects and experiments, so it benefits him and his students at the same time. This is our Gantt chart, which was created during the project management phase. And the benefit of the Gantt chart is that we can visualize all of our tasks here on a timeline. We can see durations, which you can tell by the length of the bars here. We can see which tasks are sequential, which you see here, the beginning tasks. These two stacked on top of each other are parallel tasks and they occur at the same time, and they have to, they can only be started once the task before them is completed. Here in red, you see our critical path, and also these tasks here, which are in sequential order, they are also on the critical path, but they're blue because they are 100% complete. Here you can see economic analysis extends past the, uh, most of the sequential tasks here, 
and it is not red because it's not on the critical path as it continues throughout the length of the project until right before the final presentation. This is beneficial because it helps us predict our workloads. If we see that we have, we're have light in work in certain areas, we can add some uh, extra time on other projects. Or if we see that we're kind of busy in certain areas, we can take away from those tasks and uh, get everything completed on time. Once we came up with our Gantt chart, we came up with a use case scenario. We expect that our product will be used during a potential energy and kinetic energy lab in which students will take out our BRG, assemble it, and then adjust a variety of parameters including hill height, loop diameter, and bank angles in order to successfully navigate a ping pong ball from beginning to end. Once we had our use case, we determined that we needed to know who our customers are going to be. And since our, and since our overall strategy is going to be customer focused, we figured we need to interview people who are going to be using this product day in and day out. So we conducted six interviews with parents, students, and school administrators in order to come up with their needs. Overall, the responses were that they really had a focus on usability. They made sure it wasn't difficult and that it was durable because, face it, it's going to be used by high schoolers for t hopefully a long time and that's going to be a challenge in itself. We also want to make sure the cost was low because we're dealing with schools and we know the budgets and they had concerns regarding their budgets. Now again, safety because we are dealing with kids and the last thing we want to do is hurt someone. They want to hurt people. So once we took these interviews, we came up with this summary in order to come up with an interpreted need for each one of their general statements. So for example, our first statement here says that class time is limited, so the product must be able to be assembled quickly in order to save time. So our interpreted need for that would be that it needs to be quick and easy to assemble. Now this is an example of primary because it need, it's very crucial to the overall design of the project and, their, and overall to the customer themselves. Versus our, another example is that schools only have so much money to spend and you know, <clears throat> money to spend on a, so a lower costing product would be more beneficial to the customer. So our interpreting for that is low cost. However, we gave that a secondary need because whether or not we hit an exact price point is it exactly going to be detrimental to the overall product. Once we had these needs, we conducted a survey in order to determine the rank of these needs, with five being the most important and low, one being the lowest. Now, most of these came up with pretty high scores because they have a pretty big drastic effect on the overall product design. Like, for example, five, we gave must be compact. A five because schools are schools. They have limited space to store things, and the smaller the product we can fit, the better off it'll be. Also, and versus our three, it can be repaired with, we give the three for compared, can be repaired with supplies traditionally used in the classroom. This isn't exactly a big need, However, it would be kind of nice for them to know that they can easily fix this need B, so that we're under three. So once we had these, we came up with our specifications. Now, we would like our product to be cost less than $30, take less than 15 minutes to assemble, fit on 16 by 16 inch board, have a used Arduino as a microcontroller to add energy to our product, have a 10 year lifespan or more. It also can be easily repaired, as well as offer no health risks to our users because again we're working with kids. Now once we now we then uh, created a QFD. Now a QFD takes customer needs and relates them to our specifications to see how they correlate to one another. With five again being the highest correlation and one being the lowest. So for example, our quick setup time need has a five for our setup time is less than 15 minutes specification. That makes sense because they're the exact same thing. However, and then versus a two for our for uh, our affordable, we give it a two uh, compared to our repairable with common materials. While it's not that big of a deal, it it doesn't really have, like I said prior, a drastic impact on the overall design of our product. Once we had our QFD, we went into our tech technical importance and difficulty. Now, overall, our most Difficult task regarding like technically is is going to be a uh, ten year lifespan. We're going to have to design a product that's going to last ten years in the hands of high schoolers. That's going to be hard. So here's a screenshot of our competitive benchmark on Amazon. 
And um, there's something we need to notice on this product. The first thing is that it's made of 347 pieces, which is a lot, and make it, make it really hard to assemble compared to our product. And also, we can look at the price, which is $34 for each product. And comparing to our uh, $30 price limit, it's, it's not competitive as our product, especially for the students and schools. And also, you can see the product's made of plastic, which is um, really harmful for the environment. And also, uh, it's easy to be broke or lost. So we have two economic uh, analysis for this uh, product. And here's the first scenario for the analysis, which is uh, we set the price for each product, $30 each. And uh, we can see from the graph, the break-even point here is 588 product. And uh, due to our limit of 1,000 products we can produce each year, the max maximum profit we can make is $7,000 each year. And look at the second scenario. And for this scenario, we set the price to $25, which is a little bit lower than the previous scenario. But you can see the, uh, the break-even point is at 833 product, which is way over there. And so in this part, we're not making any profit at all, so we're losing money. So it's not, it's, although it's more competitive, compared to the first product, first scenario, but it's more stressful for the company because we're losing money for a lot of time.